is an Alaskan experience not to be overlooked. These city girls will be traveling by rail on the first part of a journey that will not only leave the city behind, but time itself. A journey into part of Alaska's past. Traveling aboard the Alaska Railroad is a leisurely way to view the impressive countryside and chug the 233 miles from Anchorage to Denali National Park, the home of Mount McKinley. Many Alaskans prefer this historic mode of transportation where the clock begins turning back from the first moment the wheels grab the rails. What teenage girls usually like best is teenage boys, but with some of the world's most wondrous sights right outside the train's windows, well, they'd probably still take the teenage boys. Some of the most majestic and wild areas of the Northland are brought within reach by Alaska's Iron Horse. Five stories above the creek bed, the train rattles across Hurricane Gulch. Learning to navigate a course on a rumbling locomotive takes a certain amount of expertise. Not exactly like a Sunday afternoon stroll. Or maybe a lower center of gravity is the answer. Just enough time to catch a few flies, or catch a few winks before the train rattles to a stop. Denali is the native Alaska name for Mount McKinley and means the Great One. An effort is currently underway in Alaska to go back to the original native names for the land. For Carrie and Alice, going back means one more step away from modern transportation by taking the iron off the horse. <laughs> Pack guide Riley Gilliam has been taking horse treks across Alaska's interior for years. His expertise with the area and horses can only add to Carrie and Alice's frontier adventure. For myself, so I'm the big red one over there. The rest of them, you can kind of. Take your choice, and I'll tell you about them. And take the take oldest order. crippled one. <laughs> <laughs> and we get all kinds of people come on our rides, and it really makes it a lot of fun. Okay, this here's Buck. Here, he's a big buck skin. He's real gentle. He's a nice guy. We tell him his name's Buck, and it's Buck. You say no. Buck. Why? Uh, Why Buck? On the back of his saddle, it says Buck. Of all other names, he could stick as a warning. That's what I took it as, as a warning. This horse bucks. And we tell him, well, that's because of the color. So he's a, he's a good Does he mouth. like to buck a lot? <laughs> no, no, he don't like to buck a lot. I was really relieved to find that out. You sure you couldn't cut the legs off a little bit? I mean, uh, just to slow him down, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He'll be all right for you. He's good. He really okay. <laughs> okay, this is Tony here. She's four years old. And, uh, Hopefully, one of these city girls knows which end of the horse to face. Has some life to her, a little feisty. That's good. And she does real good. You won't have any problem with her at all. Okay, great. It's a good choice. She's pretty some people with a lot of experience, and, and it's real easy, of course, to set them on their horse and get them all fitted up and ready to go, and, and they usually pitch right in and help. Okay. And pick it up by that part there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now just bring it on over the horse. Reach up and set it on her. Some city folk take to saddling a horse right away. And then there are those who aren't sure anything connected with the chore is a cinch. Okay, I hope you watched all this, Alice, so we don't have to show you how to do yours. What? <laughs> Some folks not quite so experienced, and, and they're a lot of fun. And I think that they really get a learning experience out of it. You watching this, Alice? When it comes to nature, Alice jumps in with both feet. Oh, <laughs> Road apples, road apples. <laughs> I didn't know horses were capable of that. <laughs> this okay, city girl's go. really in for an okay, education. Left foot in the stirrup. Left yeah. foot in and the stirrup. Grab hold of the saddle horn, the back of the saddle, and 
just swing up in. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. okay. You want me to give me it? There you go. Oh, push, I knew push. it. I knew it. Look at that. This is too high. <laughs> the horse is too high. Oh, oh honey, okay. oh honey, oh honey. Hold your reins up short in this area. Keep his head up. There you go. With the faithful steed saddled and feet firmly in the stirrups, it doesn't take long to take on a western draw. Ready to go, Alice? I think the only thing Alice is ready to do is get off and walk. Okay. Just about now, you've got to wonder if this wrangler isn't wishing he had stayed in bed. Girls ready? No. No. <laughs> Could we just not and say we did? <laughs> yeah, follow him. <laughs> Right by a teenage girl and her horse, an American combination that in this case just doesn't seem to make it. You know, we take our horses back in east of McKinley Park and back in the mountains where we can get people in to see some real interesting terrain and areas that uh, not normally seen. and the trio are sharp contrast to the pavement and the shopping malls these girls are accustomed to back in the city. But it's the break from the ordinary that brings much of the excitement to the trio. Seeing the land from horseback is a different kind of experience. Everything seems larger and more awesome when viewed at this close range. And it's not long before the seat and the saddle become one. We got up in the camp. It was kind of it was kind of a shock because I expected a little bit I expected a little bit more. Okay, this is it. Let's get some firewood. Firewood. <laughs> <laughs> When we got into camp, it was raining, and so I instantly, I knew that we, this meant no fire. <laughs> I knew this meant no fire. This meant cold, this meant damp, this meant miserable. Do we have to do that? Well, sure. It's <laughs> part of the camp meeting. Where do you get it? He told me that uh, under the tree, there's some, uh, right under where the ground's not wet, and the twigs are real dry and brittle, and you can just snap them off. And we put those on first and put some uh, bigger logs on top of them. With a, It was called a one-match fire, and it was roaring. It was huge. Well, what frontier adventure is complete without some challenge to face? Like staying dry. Somebody bring matches. Oh, no. There we go. All right. There's nothing that warms the spirit like a crackling campfire. <laughs> He didn't really um, wait on us too much, and that was really kind of good because we got to do it ourselves. We got to do a lot of the things ourselves. And we try to get them to do as much as they can without, you know, pushing them to any limit. I'll put the wood on the fire. You cook the supper. I'll I'm put helping. the wood on the fire. <laughs> you really don't want to taste my cooking. Okay, girls, come on over here and give me a hand. We'll unroll this tent. Is this thing sturdy here? Well, only sometimes. We're kind of watching because it's a little bit wobbly. And, <laughs> and we're sleeping. <laughs> well, so it's not the latest in pop-up tents. And maybe it is a little less than sturdy. I looked at that, and I looked at the uh, the uh, Wrangler, and I looked at that again. And... Wait a second. Not too hard. <laughs> but when the canvas is stretched and the flaps are cinched down, things start to look more like home. You guys can help me do it, huh? Well, get it yourself, huh? <laughs> Even with all the rustic comforts of home on the range, you just can't please some people. I want to go! <laughs> it turned out to be a real good experience, and uh, and it's something that I feel like everybody needs to get away and do sometimes because it puts you in a completely different frame of mind. You don't you don't think the same thoughts that you do nine to five, you know, coming home in the six o'clock traffic. <laughs> you don't. That's, that isn't, doesn't even enter your mind. Uh, the only thing that you really think about is uh, how you're going to 
stay on your horse, clinging on for dear life <laughs> and uh, keeping things dry and, uh, you know, where you're going to sleep or the big rock underneath your sleeping bag. <laughs> it was cold and it was rainy. We woke up in the morning and there was a couple inches of snow on the ground. And uh, I just had the best time I've ever had in my whole life.